Hey, what's up? This is Chris and welcome back. We're going to start building out this site now with Astro. In last video, we set everything up and got the dev environment ready. So if you missed that or you got stuck, you can go ahead and jump in with us. Just grab the code from the repo for lesson two for the coding. And then you can come in here and just do npm i and that will install all the packages that you need. Now I've already got mine all installed, so we should be good to go. And then you can type npm run dev. That should spin up a local dev server here and you can see it here. And now we've got Astro up and running. Now, just a couple of things to mention here before we get started understanding how Astro works. Uh, if you get stuck in any of this and for some reason the packages aren't working, I would just encourage you to look in here and grab these exact number version numbers for all this, um, especially because Astro is still in beta. You know, there's likely to be breaking changes going forward, but I wanted to show it off and I think it's a helpful way uh, to kind of start learning how to do templating, even if we're not going to be using React or something like that. All right, so that's the first thing. The second thing is that if you get stuck at all, there are docs here for both Astro and Astro Icon. That's mostly what we're gonna work on in this video that you can read about. Now let's jump into reading the docs because I wanna explain kind of how things work in Astro. I'm gonna pull this over just a bit so we actually get access to the sidebar. Now the project structure is actually also explained on the little template they give you. Basically everything is gonna be inside a public folder that you don't wanna to touch, that you just wanna be like a raw asset on your site. And then everything you're gonna to use to build the site is in this SRC folder. Now by default, you've got pages here and anything you put in here with a .astro extension will actually have just its own route. So you could do like new .astro and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Everything else then can live in a components folder. And the idea of templating things or building things out with components is that you can use code multiple times throughout your site. And if you template it right, then you can just pass in whatever data you need to make that section of the site have the right data in it. Now, if that doesn't make sense, don't worry. I think as we work through this, you'll kind of get the hang of why you might want to do something like this, even with just like a HTML, CSS, and JavaScript site, rather than just coding it out uh, hard-coded. All right, let's go ahead and jump over here. I've got this indexed Dot astro and let's go ahead and talk about that templating as we kind of convert this page to a more dynamic set. Now, if I jump back over here to this project structure and let's pull this open, uh, you come down here to layouts. And one of the things that they suggest you do is put all your basic layouts, your patterned layouts in a folder called layouts. So that's not created by default, but I can create that if I just come over here and do a new folder and we'll call this layouts. Now inside here, I'm just gonna add one file for now. We're gonna call this base layout like that dot astro and what i want to do is use this as a template for any page that might be on the site so i'm going to come over here and grab everything actually from my index dot astro let's grab all of this all the way up to here and there are these little uh, guard sections with these three end dashes and you can leave that alone for now i'm going to come over here and just drop all of this in here i will need to delete the tour and i'll show you why here in a second and then come back over here to index dot astro and i'm going to delete all of this so now I have what I've got is just this section here with nothing in it in the index.astro page. And then over here, I pulled all the data from the index.astro page and removed that one tour component. Now, basically what we're trying to do is make it to where we can use a basic head, a basic footer, and nav that I would have on every page of the site, and then just dropping content for each individual page when I need to alter kind of that default. So how do we pass this template back to the index.astro page? Well, in Astro, you do it with a simple import. And if you're used to JavaScript, it's basically that. So you come over here and you'd say import, and then you're just gonna import base layout from, and then here is a relative path. So we're gonna go up a level and then into layouts and then into base layout. Now, if I save this, I can come over here and now I can just type base layout as if it were like a H1 tag or something like that. And I'm actually gonna leave it just like that. And if I save it, we should actually get an error and the reason is, is we don't have title defined. And if you look over here at the base layout, we're saying that we need some kind of templating here. That's what's inside these brackets of title. So we pass this whole layout over to index. How do we get data from index over here to the base layout? Well, it would be just like an SRC attribute on an image component or an alt attribute or something like that. We're gonna actually add essentially like an attribute, it's called a prop. And if you're used to JSX or working with React or something like that, you're gonna be very familiar with this. But I'm just gonna pass in here title equals, and we'll call this design landing page, something like that. And now over here, I need to find a way to actually grab that. And just like I found in my index.astro page, I need to add this little templating language up top. 
Now, you may have noticed that VS Code did that automatically, and that's actually because I've got an extension here called Astro. Just make sure you get the one by Astro, and this gives you language support for typing in Astro. Probably should have mentioned that up front here. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull in that data, those props that we got when we added the component in our index.astro. So I'm going to say const, and here we're just going to destructure title from Astro like that, make sure it's capitalized dot props. And now there we go, we've got welcome to Astro, and look, our title came in as design landing page, which is what we passed it. So just to kind of rehearse the way that this templating works is you're going to have imports when you're trying to pull in whole components, and then you can pass those components data with these props. To get the props, then once you're inside of those components, you simply type const and then destructure whatever the name of the prompt is. Now I can even give this a default, so I could say something like, this is a page or something, and that's kind of a default value. So it's gonna pass at that if I don't give any kind of title here. So if I were to remove this altogether, now it's gonna say this is a page. So if you have multiple pages on your site, what you might wanna do is have something like that to where this ends up being the default, just the name of your site. And then if you forget to pass in a title, it won't break everything and it will just show at least the name of your site. Now in this game, I'm gonna pass this back. And now that I've got a title, you'll see that over here, even though I've got a default set, it's not gonna use that. It's gonna use the thing I passed in. Now let's remove this for now because we've just got a single page. So let's not make it more complicated than it needs to be. Now I mentioned a second ago that you have automatic routing set up. So if I were to come in here and grab this and duplicate it, and let's call this something else. Let's call this new.astro. I've got this set up and I can actually just come to this new route, new like that, and it's already set up. In fact, I could just change this to new landing page and you see that it actually is pulling in that title. But the problem is if I've got two different pages using the same component, obviously I want the, the content to be different. Well, how do you do that in Astro? Well, all you need to do is on your component, you need to pass a little slot component. So if I come down here, wherever I want that to be, so like if I wanted it to be right here, I would just pass slot like that, and it's a self-closing tag. And now I can come over here to new, and inside here, assuming that I have an opening and a closing tag of my base layout, I can just say like, hi, I'm a new page, or whatever. Now notice I'm on my index.astro page, and that doesn't show, but if I were to go back to my new page, there it is, hi, I'm a new page. Same thing if I go over here and inside here, I say something like homepage, and then I move back to my homepage and refresh, there we go, homepage right there. So you can actually pass content in both as props, or you can just say, hey, give me a slot in this component that I can fill custom for each individual time that I call this component. Now, if this is all a little bit new to you, don't worry, we're gonna get really comfortable with it as we move throughout, because we're gonna be building components this entire video series. So let's remove this and let me get rid of this new and we'll just kill this all together. All right, and then let's go ahead and start building some more stuff out on this base layout. Now, I do want that slot in there. I'm gonna remove all of this though. I don't need any of that. And then this style tag is actually scoped to this component. I'm gonna remove all of that as well. Everything else up here looks good though, so I'm gonna leave that alone for now. Now, what we could do is break this head out into its own component as well, if we wanted to. Um, but we're going to make it a little simpler and just worry about components when it comes to actually building out the content of our site. Now, when we look at the landing page that we built out in Figma here, we're going to look at two things right now, this footer section, because that's pretty easy to do. And then up top, we're going to worry about this, uh, this nav bar. And that'll be all we think about in this video. That will give me a chance to show you how to use JavaScript as well as how to use our Astro icon package that we imported. So first of all, let's go ahead and build the footer in. That'll be the easiest thing. Right here, we're just gonna add a footer tag. And the nice thing about these Astro pages is it's essentially just HTML. Now there are obviously some different things about it, like here we're passing in actual props that we're getting, but the rest of it looks very much like HTML. Now for right now, we're not gonna style anything, but let's go ahead and come in here and inside this footer, I'm gonna add just a small tag here. This is gonna say copyright, and then I'll have the copyright symbol span, and this will have an ID of copyright year. We're not gonna have anything in there right now. And then I'll have uh, the name of the, the site design. Now eventually I'm gonna wanna put a class on here of blur. So for now, I'll just go ahead and do that so that it's ready for us. So if I save this, you see there, it shows up right there, copyright design. Now I mentioned wanting to show you a little bit of JavaScript. There's several ways you can use JavaScript in Astro. First of all, you can write JavaScript in any of this front matter and that will only be processed on build. You can also link to JavaScript files that would be client side or you can just write inline script tags and decide whether you want them to be scoped to the component or available globally. 
So I'm just gonna add a script tag for now, and we'll keep this pretty simple. All we wanna do is grab access to that ID. So document.query selector. We're gonna grab this right here, and this is an ID, so I need a pound sign in front of it. And then we'll do text content equals new date, like that, dot get full year. That's just a method that lives on dates. And if I refresh here, you can see already it's updated for us. All right, now we haven't done anything with styling yet, but that's all right. We're going to leave that alone for now. We've got a footer ready for us. And in any page that uses this template, this footer will be down at the bottom once we get around to styling it. Now, the next thing I want to show you is the nav bar. And in this case, I actually do want to create a separate component for this, mostly just because it's going to take up a lot of room to get this all right. And I don't want to clutter up this base layout component. So this component can actually reference other components. Let me come up here and I'm going to say import. And this is going to be a named component. We'll just call it a uh, nav bar from, and then eventually we're going to go up a level, look at components, and we're going to have nav, nav bar dot astro. Now you may have noticed for both of these that I'm actually uh, capitalizing the first letter and that's just good convention. That's how a lot of these templating languages work when you're having components. So we're going to have, say nav bar dot astro and now it shouldn't yell at us anymore. I might need to kill my server and just start it back up again. And there we go, when I do that, everything is set. Okay, so now we've got navbar.astro. What I can do is come back here, and I'm just gonna add this navbar right here. So again, it's just capital navbar, that's what I pulled in up top. It's a self-closing tag, because in this case, I'm not gonna have a slot component. So the only reason you would have a tag like this and then have a self-closing tag or an, another tag, an actual closing tag, is if you wanted to slot in some content. In this case, everything is gonna be contained in that nav bar component. So we've got that set. And if I were to come here and whatever I type in here is gonna show up on the page as part of that component. All right, now up top here, even though I'm not passing in data, I do actually wanna do some stuff up in this front matter. And again, this front matter is only accessible during the build, it's not going to be visible anywhere on your site or anything like that. This is just going to be used to produce a final build file. The first thing I want to do is we're going to have a, an icon up here. So I'm going to say import icon from Astro icon. It's going to look inside our node modules and find that Astro icon that we added as a dev dependency. Now, the next thing I'm going to add is actually just an array. And Astro can pull data, and I could have this in a separate file if I wanted to, but it can pull data like objects or arrays or whatever, and then parse through that data to make things a lot quicker when you're building them out and keep, it, and keep things way more concise. Now, what I've got here is just the name of the actual nav link, and then I've got the URL it points to and the style that I want it to have. That essentially just reflects here. We've got home pricing about and then contact me. And on this one, I want it to be my primary color. Now, when it comes to Astro icon, if I move over this way, um, once we've installed it and set it up like we did last time, there's a couple different ways to use it. We're going to use both of those in uh, this video series. You can actually pull in from a bunch of different icons. It's right up here, Iconify. We're going to do that later. Or you can pass in local icons and have it optimize it with SVGO. Now, both of these are really cool, and I've actually done a video on Astro Icon on my channel. If you're interested in more, then I'll be able to go into in this short tutorial. Now you see here, if you're gonna use it for local icons, it's expecting a folder called icons inside your SRC directory. So let's come over here and I'm gonna add a new folder and this is called icons. And then all I need to do is add icons to that folder. Now I've got mine off screen, let me grab them. I've added just two things, my logo and then the programmer. If I move over here, I got those just by exporting this right here and exporting this. If you don't know how to export from Figma and you went ahead and did the design, you just select it, make sure you select SVG and then you can export the logo right here or whatever it's called. Just make sure that whatever you're exporting is a group or a frame or something like that. It has to actually be linked together like this. Otherwise it will export separate individual items for each of the things you export. Now the only problem with Figma and other design programs is those SVGs you get from them are often very bloated. If I come over here and look at this logo, there's just a bunch of stuff in here. Now, a lot of this might be necessary, but some of it we could probably cut out. And that is what Astro Icon is going to let us do. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is to come down this way. Let's close the sidebar. And then I'm going to create a nav element. Now, inside this nav element, I'm going to have a div with a class of container and a class of nav container. And here's where we're going to add our first icon using Astro Icon. This is going to be a local file, and if I look over here, it tells me that after I've imported it, which I have up top here, and in fact, I need to destructure it, which I don't think I did, then what I can do is just pass it a file name. And you'll notice that as long as it's in the icons folder, then it just expects it to be the name of the file with a .svg extension, and I can pass it just like this. So that means I can come in here, 
and mine was called logo. So if I add it like that and come over here, it should be showing up and it's not. So let's see what's going on. So if I come in here, I do have this being pulled in. There's my nav container. There's my logo, but I've got nothing on it. And I think what I need to do is just provide it a size. So you can pass in a bunch of things and it gives you access to any standard attribute. So I could do like ARIA attributes or even classes, just passing class. Um, but I could also pass in like width or whatever. So let's pass in a width. And here when it's a number, I'm going to pass it in, in brackets here. We'll say 225. And then I am going to give this a class of logo. And now if I save it, there it is. I don't know if you can see that because the background is uh, so light. So let's do this. Let's add a style tag here just temporarily. And we'll say that any nav has a background color of, uh, let's do black. It helps if you do background color correctly. All right, there we go. So now you can see it. Now it's actually got a filter on it, a CSS filter, which is why it's hard to see against the white background there. Now, the cool thing about this is it's been minified as much as possible with SVGO. And all I'd had to do is pass in a name right here. Such is the brilliance of Astro Icon. Again, if you're interested more in this, I did a video on my channel you're welcome to check out. Now, if we look at our finished design, we've got this over here, and then we've got all these uh, names for the different pages that might be on this site. Obviously, we didn't design all of those. So let's go ahead and add all of these, and they will be in their own separate container so that we can justify space between on them and keeping the logo over here and everything else this way. So let's come back over this way. Let's add that container. We're going to call it Nav uh, Wrapper. And then let me give myself a little bit more space. And inside here, I actually want two different things. I'm going to have a UL. That's where all my nav links are going to live. And then I'm also going to have a button. Now, this button is only going to be visible on mobile. And that will be my little toggle that we'll use to expand and close the menu. So let's do these one at a time. First of all, I'm going to give this button a class of button and then button menu. And we'll use that when we style things. We'll give it an ID of menu, uh, menu button. And then because it controls a section that expands, I'm going to say aria expanded. We're going to set this to false because by default, it will not be expanded. And because there's going to be no text here, I need to make sure I pass it aria label to make sure that screen readers and other assistive technology know what this does. So we'll say open uh, mobile nav. Now inside here, I actually want an SVG as part of this button, as really the visible part of this button. You know what that means? That means we get to use Astro icon again. So if I come back over here, now we're not going to worry about local icons. We're going to come all the way back up here. And instead, we're going to pick from different packs that are available to us. And you can grab them here from this site. Because we used feather icons, let me just search for feather icons. Now, there is a feather icon. So you want to make sure you grab feather icons because that's the one we used. And then I'll just search for menu. And here it is right here. So let's grab this. And I, all I have to do is copy this text right here. And then we're going to go ahead and move this icon down. And it's the same syntax, even though this is not a local icon. I'm just going to add the name right here. Let's remove all of this for now. And if I save it and come back over this way, you're going to see that my icon button shows right there. In fact, to see the icon, I, need to, I do need to give it a width. And we're going to pass this 25. And there it is. Now, by default, these icons use the current color, which is the color of its parent, this button. So once we get around to setting the color for that, it will pick up whatever the color of that parent is. I mentioned the other thing we've got here is a UL. This is where we're going to have our nav links. So let's add a class of nav links to that. This will have a role of navigation. And now we're going to get to map through that data that we added up top. You remember at the very top in the head matter, in this front matter, we added an array of nav links. So I'm going to come down this way. And inside this UL, rather than manually typing out all of these individual LI tags, I'm going to add curly brackets. Now this tells Astro that you're either passing in props or you're doing JavaScript. That means I can write plain JavaScript right here and it will build it and then just spit out plain HTML when it's done. So let's grab our nav links and then we're just going to map over them. It's an array after all. So we're going to grab a link and then in parentheses and make sure they're parentheses and not curly brackets, we're going to have an li with a role of none. I'm going to add an anchor tag. And then inside here, I don't actually need these quotation marks. I can just do it inside brackets, which again tells it I'm doing some kind of templating. I'll say link.url. Now, if I come back up top, you'll notice that each of these objects have a URL property. And that's all I'm referencing here. That means inside here, I can say link.name. Now, if I save it, you can see over here now our, our color is getting in the way. Where was that style? Here we go. Let's say like gray. All right, so there we go. Now we can see that we've got those names coming in. And if I were to hover over each of these, you can see I've got inside here, this is the forward slash, all the other ones were these pound signs. And so now we've got all of those dynamically being generated 
in this little map function. And we have a couple other things to name. That is, we need to give this a class of button, and then we want it to have a button, and then the style will be the, the other property that we need to pass in from the object. Because we're doing JavaScript, we can just add this into template string here with link.style. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't style it very clearly to, to let you know that you've done that correctly, but that is the right way to do it. And then finally, we're going to add a nav link class to this. If I come back over here and we inspect this again, you'll now see I've actually got those style tags. So button transparent is for that one. Let's see, I think it's the final one that says button primary, if you can see that. And maybe let's move this down to the bottom so it's a little easier to see anyhow. So while our output is very much so just standard HTML, we're able to quickly loop through a bunch of data and spit out exactly what we want. Now, I know we haven't done any styling and this looks horrible so far, but <laughs> that's okay. Uh, let's do one more thing in this video, and that is we're gonna go ahead and add a script tag. Again, because I want this to actually be client side, I want it to be down here rather than up in the front matter. So I'm gonna say script, and then let's get a little bit more space, and I need to grab a few things. So I need our nav button, and I'll say document, dot query selector and I'm going to grab the ID of menu button then I actually want to grab this should be buttons sorry about that this should be nav links and here I want to grab all my nav links we added the class of nav links to all of those and then we need to attach an event listener to this nav button so we'll say nav button dot add event listener we're listening for a click and here we're not going to pass it anything but let's go ahead and write just write this in line but we're going to pay attention to the property on here of aria expanded now that already expanded property is already going to have to change from false to true. So rather than adding an extra class or something like that, let's just use that re attribute and use that to style our CSS and everything else. So I can just check to see what that is and reverse it. So I'll say nav button dot set attribute and the attribute we're wanting to set is aria expanded. And then I'm going to copy all that because inside here, we're going to say the same thing, except instead of set attribute, we're going to say get attribute. So we're going to set the attribute of already expanded to this. And what we're going to write is a little ternary here. The first thing we're going to check is we're going to give it a condition. So we're going to say if this equals false, then I want you to change it to true. Otherwise, put it at false. Now, if this is the first time seeing a ternary, they're a little funky. So let me walk through this with you. Uh, basically, we're giving it a condition. The condition here is if get attribute of already expanded equals false. And if it does, then go ahead and change this already expanded right here to true. Otherwise, set it to false. So it's just going to essentially reverse it. Now, if we did this correctly, let's come in here and grab this button right here. When we click on the button down below, it should change from false to true and true to false. And there it goes back and forth. We can use that to style uh, this mobile navigation menu. And we'll do that here in the next video. I hope this video was helpful for you both in learning how to kind of template out things in Astro. And in addition to that, getting a chance to see Astro icon. Now, one final note, if you're used to writing in React or Vue or Svelte, you can actually use those normal components that you're used to using. But the only difference is in Astro, because it's a static site generator, it will just output static HTML. You can choose whether or not to hydrate that, and I'll leave it to you to look at the docs to do that, since that's beyond kind of the scope of what I'm covering. But if you don't write vanilla JavaScript, you much rather would store things like this in state. You can do that very easily using Astro. Now in the next video, let's go ahead and start making this not look like the worst site you've ever seen. And let's start using the design that we've built out and actually building out this design using CSS. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that one. And I will catch you next time. Happy coding.